Ray. What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The Pinky and the Brain. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. One is a genius, the other's insane. The laboratory mice, the genes have been sliced. The Pinky, the Pinky and the Brain. Brain, 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 brain. Before each night is done, their plan will be unfurled by the dawning of the sun. They'll take over the world, the Pinky and the Brain. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. Their twilight campaign is easy to explain. To prove their mousy worth, they'll overthrow the earth. The Pinky, the Pinky and the Brain. Brain, 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 Brain. Arf! Okay, we're here. We haven't been on speaker for a while. Not since the election a couple of days ago. We're a couple of days downstream of the election, and now we're things are playing out. The president and um, President-elect Obama met today, both um, saying that it was a productive meeting. I guess President Obama showed President Elect Trump where all the bathrooms were and um, where, where to plug in the fax machine. The, place, the best place to have the lamp on the desk in the Oval Office. That kind of stuff. You know, organization. A lot of, a lot of organizational stuff. <clears throat> Michelle um, took Melania on, on the First Lady tour of the White House. You know, this is where the, this is where the bathrooms are and you know, this is where they keep the sheets. Let's go to the kitchen, and 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 this is and this is how we get food, and it's because they have an eleven-year-old Baron, so you know, getting food and snacks, and you know, just m- mom stuff. Um, I think, and I, I and I always, I always get them confused. You have to forgive me. I think Baron is the same age that um, uh, Malaya Malia was. When they entered the White House, so he's eleven. I think she was eleven. So in the age, there are some similarities. Um, so that that happened today, and and everybody was everybody was cordial and complimentary, as they should be. As as they should be. This is one of those things where you know what there is a there is a way to do this, and um, I think both. President-elect Trump and President Obama did it in the way that it should have been done. That the transition um, was done well. Or at least started well. And to President Obama's credit, he initiated it. From what I understand, he called President-elect Trump and said, Hey, why don't you come by on Thursday? And we'll get this process started. It's a classy move. Now, for those of you who listen to me, who get crazy every time somebody says something um, seemingly positive about Barack Obama, you know, truth is the truth. It was a classy move, good for President Obama. You know, this is this is the same guy who who for a year and a half talked about President Obama was born in Kenya, haven't haven't seen his birth certificate, blah, 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 on, 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 on. And then when the guy wins the presidency, and nobody and nobody can believe it, Obama says, hey, why don't you guys come by and we'll get this transition thing started. Sounds good to me. Now, I, I just had a thought. Is that a slap in the face that it happened so quickly to... Hillary Clinton? Is that a slap in the face? That less than 48 hours after the uh, after the election actually less than 24 hours after the election President Obama was calling Trump saying why don't you guys come over? Was that really a punch in the gut to Hillary Clinton you think? That would happen so quickly. 
Like that meeting couldn't wait a week. That it had to happen this week. It had to happen less than 48 hours after the elections. There are still some, there are still some districts. There are still some precincts that haven't been counted yet. What do you think? What do you think Hillary Clinton was thinking? When um, President Obama and President-elect Trump are sitting in the White House smiling at one another. Both saying that the meetings were productive. Really? Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Don't you think? Absolutely amazing. And still, 16 electoral votes in Michigan. Trump seems to be leading. Seems to be leading. Still not decided yet. Isn't that amazing? That Michigan is not decided. And neither is New Hampshire. You can walk across New Hampshire in the afternoon. I'm a fat guy. I can walk across New Hampshire in the afternoon. And we're talking about less than a million votes total. Less than a million votes total. And New Hampshire with four, four electoral votes is not settled. And neither is Michigan with 16. So that's another 20. So it could end up, so it looks like, well, wait a minute. Four are going to Hillary Clinton, probably, which will give her uh, 232. And 16 go to Trump, which will give him, let's see, 306. You know, so it, 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 it just it just seems like I'm not sure what's going on in either of those places. But what I am sure is going on is is in is in the major in a lot of the major cities of the country there are anti-Trump protests going on already. But the globalists are using Captain Cupcake and the basement dwellers as useful idiots to protest. the election of Donald Trump. You know, I'm watching a video on my on, on, on my phone of this man at an intersection being drug out of his car, out of his vehicle. And being pummeled. By three black people. Uh, Apparently for having a Trump sticker on his car. Being pummeled. You know, somebody goes and gets a camera and videotapes the whole deal. I'm not sure where this is. I mean, they're stomping this guy in the street while, while, I mean, two guys are stomping him while, while the other guy is going through his, uh, going through the guy's car people are just standing around while one of them is trying to steal the guy's car (laughs) 
Well, it seems like Captain Cupcake and the and, and the basement dwellers have lost their damn mind. It seem it really does. It seems like Captain Cupcake and the basement dwellers have lost their damn mind. Now, I'll tell you what. I knew that people would be upset. I posted, and I'm going to read to you what I posted because I think I, I think I said it. Pre- I think I said it pretty well. As a matter of fact, I'm sure that I said it pretty well. I'm sure that I knocked it out of the park here. Let me see here. Let me back up. I'm trying to find my my post on my Facebook page uh, because because I know how this feels. Here's what I posted the after the election. Hey. I know what you're going through. You feel like you can't breathe. Your mind will not quiet down. It's going 100 miles an hour. You feel totally depressed. You are sad, frustrated, and angry all at the same time. You don't want to read, see, or hear about the election. It just all seems too much to take, like too much to take. You are searching for nefarious reasons for the loss. You are sure it was stolen. You are sure that people are just stupid and easily led. You are trying to figure out how some of your friends that seem to be bright could get sucked in like this. And the more you think about it, the angrier you get. Hey, I know how you feel. I have felt that way twice in recent history. In 2008 and 2012. Hey, I'm still here, and I'm okay. And you and you will be okay too. So, for those of you who are listening, who are um, angry, frustrated, you'll be okay. You will be just fine. Because what's happening right what's happening right out there right now in some of America's major cities that seem to be protesting against the election of Donald Trump. Frankly, let me help you, don't have anything to do with Donald Trump. They have to do with destabilizing America and making Americans feel like their elect, their election system it ha, um, is, is broken. When frankly, it's the best in the world. But the globalists see what happened on Tuesday as a setback. They see it happening as a setback. Because if Clinton if, if Clinton gets elected, the globalist agenda continues. If someone like Jeb Bush gets elected, then the globalist agenda continues. But with Donald Trump, Donald Trump's message of America first is a setback to the globalist agenda. It's a setback. It's one and it's really funny it because this is all about perception. This is this is not about reality because you know what the um the Clinton campaign brought this up and correctly so all through the campaign that um, Trump has um, a lot of places around the country where he has factories, where they build his, you know, you know, where they make his ties and shirts and and clothing and all sorts of stuff. And, and there isn't a um, an entity that's more invested around the country than than Trump Properties. So Trump has been dealing with the rest of the world in his business life for a very long time. This has to do with perception, because what the globalists know, what the George Soroses of the world know, is that it's really not about reality. It's not about facts and figures. It's not about that. It's about how he can make people feel, how he can make his his minion, and I'm going to say it that way on purpose, feel like somehow they they have been dis, disenfranchised, which is that. Uh, 
you know what you see you know you'll see in here um, over the next few days probably over the next few months an attack on the electoral college now it's interesting the very same system that elected Barack Obama twice and Bill Clinton twice was fine then nobody's screaming for some changes to the electoral college um, but now when it's worked against them is you know is and that's the and that, that's really who the left is when it's working against them then they're screaming about being disenfranchised, then they're screaming about all the things that um, that they always scream about. Like, this is not fair, and we've been disenfranchised, and we got to change this, blah, 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 blah. But as long as it's working in their favor, everything is hunky-dory and cool. But that's how Captain Cupcake behaves. Captain Cupcake is fine as long as things are working in his favor. The second things aren't working in in his favor, this is when he throws the tantrum. And what you're seeing around America is is the Captain Cupcake tantrum. You remember, think about this group of people. You know what? I know the phrase is millennium, is, is, is millennials, but I don't even want to use that phrase um, because it, it 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 doesn't really talk about everybody. But but these group of people are the very same ones. Think about this: who would throw a fit in the grocery store? These are the pe- These are the kids who never got spanked. These this is the timeout generation. These are the people. Who everybody got a, This is a group of people that everybody got a trophy. These are the same group of people where saying somebody was stupid got you in trouble. That you couldn't call people stupid. You could even use the word stupid. This are these are the this are them. These are them. These are the people. Or the group of people who were bullied online. These are the people who believe that you can be bullied online. This is the caring and accepting generation. That everything is okay, everything's fine, whatever you want to do. Except be a housewife or be a be a conservative or or even be a republican be straight be a person of faith be a christian everything's fine as long as you don't want to do any, any of that stuff these this is who these people are so they're frankly because most of them aren't operating uh, most of them are operating in hypocrisy already. They're perfectly okay with pushing the um, global, globalist Marxist agenda because it's you know it's all set up behind a, a, a smiley face. They've been told. I mean, this is the same generation that's been told that I believe our children are our future. These these are the very same people who have been told. Um, that go home and tell you and and tell your parents, go home and tell your parents that this is Barack Obama um, eight years ago. Go home and tell your parents because your parents will understand. You're the ones who understand. This is Barack Obama talking to your kids eight years ago. Think about if you're if you if somebody is twenty years old out there rioting. Eight years ago, they were twelve. Barack Obama is the only president that they, they remember. That's who these people are. So it is interesting, frankly, it's interesting um, to see the effect that Barack Obama has had on this generation who's out there protesting, who's out there angry somehow, that they would like to believe are angry because of the election of Donald Trump.
bullcrap. That is not what you're seeing. That's crap. That is not what you're seeing at all. Wrong. Not what you're seeing. What you're seeing is globalists who have who believe that we've missed an opportunity to lessen ourselves so we can fit into the global scheme. You are correct, sir. That's what you're seeing, and this is the um, this is the the backlash of it. That is what you're seeing. It's terrorism. It's not free speech, but you can only get away with it, um, this kind of nonsense in America, because we do have the First Amendment and we do have free speech. Now, free speech, the idea of free speech has been bastardized to include expressions that are just, that are dangerous and destructive. Free speech does not cover dangerous and destructive behavior. Like you can't, I mean, the whole idea of you can't stand up and yell fire in a crowded theater. You can't incite people to riot. You can't be Rachel Maddow and get on M- MSNBC and tell people that um, that Donald Trump has a master plan has a master plan that's going to um, that, that's in the works right now to roll back civil rights it's inciting it can incite people to riot she needs, she should be in jail She should be in jail. I just got it's it's funny. I think I think a lot of people I think a lot of people are getting it, which is which is encouraging to me. I was kind of discouraged yesterday, but I'm I'm getting more and more encouraged right now. And and this is why we do this live. Um, I've got a um a Facebook message from uh, a guy I used to go to church with, and this is what he writes, and this is really good. Since Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton plan A didn't work, now they're going to plan B. Al Sharpton. He's been in and out of the White House many times and it was not about having conversations with about their kids and grandkids. That is that is the truth. The idea of someone like Sharpton who is who is part of the globalist movement, who's part of the agitator set, he's part of the agitator culture. So what they're so what they're trying to do is if, if they can cause as much trouble as they can, maybe and and there's a, a a woman in a city councilman or a county commissioner there in Seattle who's calling for shutting down the uh, inauguration. She's a socialist that they have elected up there. A socialist that that, that they have elected up there. And she's trying to, and she's trying to encourage people to to protest and riot and shut down the inauguration, Be- because it's more important than what it looks like. The pre- guess what? The president can be inaugurated indoors in private. It doesn't have to be outside. They can't. It's not possible for them to shut down. It's a. I mean, it just isn't. Impo- it's not possible for them to stop the transfer of power and responsibility as far as the president goes. It's not possible for them. But what they want to do is they want to create such fear and trepidation by law-abiding people. What they're hoping to do so they can further their agenda is for all hell to break loose and for innocent people to get killed. That woman... That that's that councilwoman up there in Seattle should be arrested 
for for attempting to incite a riot. Free speech gives you a lot of latitude, but not that much latitude. It just doesn't give you that kind of latitude that you can incite a riot. And that's what she's trying to do. You know, it's interesting. I'm um, I'm looking at the Drudge Report, and there are there are two pictures. What the top picture is President-elect Trump sitting next to um, President Obama. Trump's wearing a red tie. Obama's wearing a blue tie. Um, Trump is looking looking off to his right. President Obama is looking off to his left. And I think they're in the oval. I think they're in the oval. Uh, I'm not. And then underneath there's a picture of Mrs. Trump and Mrs. Obama. I'm not sure what room they're in, but they're facing one another. Melania is looking directly at Michelle. Michelle and Melania. Michelle and Melania looking directly at her. Michelle seems to be. She seems to be smiling as she's talking to Melania. Um, I was trying to see if Melania was shaking, taking notes, but she, she isn't. She has her hands folded, um, staring right at, at at Mrs. Obama as they talk about you know the, how to be the how to be the first lady in the White House. This is some of the crap you have to do. <laughs> this, this is kind of how this thing works interesting it's interesting listen we're gonna take a little break thanks for uh th- thanks for joining our little program tonight um fight back media is um we are in the process of growing the website we are in the process of releasing a um a ebook on interpersonal relationships and the reason that we're entering th- that we're doing this ebook on interpersonal relationships because what we want to do is get a get a lot of you prepared to go out into the urban community and make a difference. I mean, it's great that we've got great urban voices that are ready to make a difference, but the biggest difference maker is you. You are the biggest um, difference maker, especially where you are. And we want to make sure that you have all the tools by which to do that. We want, to under, we want you to understand communication. We want, you, we want you to understand confrontation. We want you to understand resolution. We want, to, we, want, we want you to understand things like continuation, bargaining. We want, we, we want you to understand what you're looking at. We want, we want you to understand the, um, the Solomonsky rules for radicals tactics that, that, that are being used and will be used um, while you're out there advocating for the right things in your community. And we're building these tools for you to use. Um, the first one is a, a book on communication called Did You Hear What You Just Said? Um, it is an ebook. We ju- is it, it is a, is it, It's going to be in the pre-order stage. I just clicked the button probably an hour ago. For it to be in, in the pre-order stage, which means we got about twelve hours before it shows up on Amazon. The release will be Christmas Day, two thousand sixteen, of that book, and after that book, there will be more. Uh, one on, of course, one completely on communication. Another one on what I call constructive confrontation. Um, another one on on the third one on resolution, and the fourth one on continuation. So it's going to be. A great series, and then the next series is going to be on tack on, on the tactics of Saul, uh, of Alinsky, the Alinsky tactics in his book Rules for Radicals, a primer, a, a pragmatic primer for activists. So um, it's going to be it, it, it's going to be a, a great set of tools. Um, along with the eBooks, there will be videos and webinars. Um, but we're building the tools that you will need. Um, in order to be effective where you are. And that's so important. 
um, that you are effective where you are. I mean, I could send, um, and we're going to, we're going to send some great people in your communities to do some great things, but the but before they get there, it's going to be it's going to take all of us to lay the groundwork for them to be effective. You know, when Smith Smith Wigglesworth Wigglesworth, one of the one of the greatest evangelists of of all time, would go into a city. Um, a lot of times, he would send either he would send his compatriots, his prayer warriors, in, or he would go himself before um, for for a, a number of days before and do nothing but pray. Because he had to set the atmosphere for people to hear the word before he came, uh, before he would have his big rallies, um, they would they would pray and set the atmosphere. And what we're doing here is a very similar concept. The, the concept is that we want to empower you, give you all the tools to to um, sort of lay the groundwork for if we were able to send somebody like Nadra Inzi to your town to talk about urban safety. Uh, or we send somebody like K. Carl Smith to talk about the, um, Frederick Douglass Republicans or Sonny Johnson to give the conservative message to those in the urban community. We want the groundwork laid. We want you to, but we, but I and I know it's hard to have all the tools. But so we're building the tools. We are in the process of building the tools that you need to be able to, to lay the groundwork for fantastic things to happen in your community, not just over the next four years, but over the next forty years. So if you could. Um, as soon as you can, and it's going to be on, the pre-order button is going to be on the website as soon as it populates on on Amazon. Again, we just did it before we um, before we press the button for the show. We just pressed the pre-order button. So they tell me it's going to take about twelve hours for, for for English and probably a little longer for the other languages. But as soon as it does, um, we're going to put that pre pre-order button on. The website, um, the uh, the book is, is the book is going to be five. The first book is going to be five dollars. Now, there's, there's a video. I think I think there's a video up, or there's going to be a video up um, on the website about pre-ordering the book and making a donation as well. But the the pre-order is five dollars. Now, when the book is released on Christmas Day, the price is going to increase. But the pre-order right now, if it, when it gets up on the website, is going to be five dollars. Um, and of course, I'm looking at my email now, thinking that maybe instead of twelve hours, it happened in a half hour, but it didn't. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes you get lucky. You know, sometimes they tell you it's going to be it's going to be two days, and, it's, and it ends up being like two hours. Uh, like T-Mobile says, uh, you know, when you pay, and it's going to be, um, and it's, it, it could be as much as 24 hours and you, uh, before your service is restored, and then it's it's like 30 seconds. <laughs> hey, 30 seconds. But the, um, the, the release date for the book is December 25th. Um, the title of the book is, Did You Hear What I, Did You Hear What You Just Said? Communications for the Hearing. Um, and there'll be other tools that you, that you can use again. Um, and it's going to be what you need. If you need more um, instruction on constructive confrontation, then we'll do uh, some videos and we'll do a webinar um, that you can participate in. All designed to make you a stronger, a stronger activist in the urban community. So um, that's going to be up soon. So that's something to look forward to on the fightbackmedia.com website. So go there now, poke around, enjoy yourself. Um, we'll be back right after these messages. My name is Willie Lawson, and this is, this is Fight Back, the flagship, show, flagship program of the Fight Back Media Group. We'll be back right after these messages. Information is crucial 
when you're looking to purchase a new home. With so many choices of communities and options, choosing the right one for you and your family can be a daunting task. That's why you need to go to New Homes of Tampa Bay right now, www.newhomestpa.com, and get the information you need. Learn how people save thousands of dollars when purchasing new homes. Buy like the pros. New Homes, Tampa Bay, www.newhomestpa.com. It's all the rage to call and order flowers from 1-800-whatever or go online and order them from some nameless, faceless person on the other end. I'm saying you should do something different. You should, before doing that, call my friends at Blooming Days Flower Shop, located right here in Tampa, Florida, at 11618 North Florida Avenue, 33612. Christine and her staff don't look at just the order. They look at the customer. They look at your occasion. They consider the entire person, the entire occasion, before making decisions about design and price. You're more than just a customer. You're a friend. Call our friends at Blooming Days Flower Shop, toll free, at 1-800-330-3297. 1-800-330-3297. Local, 813-971-5947. 813-971-5947. You can reach them on the web at www.bloomingdays.com. Nothing fits a home perfectly than a brand new grand piano. And if you're looking for a piano for your brand new home, you've got to visit Dave's Piano. And that's davespianoshowroom.com. If you're looking for the perfect, perfect thing to set off your new home, a piano is what you're looking for. And my friend Dave has the perfect piano for you. And the best thing about <clears throat> buying a, a, a piano from Dave is that he does everything. He delivers, he sets up, he tunes, he takes care of everything. The best part about Dave's piano, quite frankly, is Dave. So when you buy a piano from Dave's Piano Showroom, you only deal with Dave. You can reach them at www.davespianoshowroom.com. That's davespianoshowroom.com. All right, we're back. Thanks so much for for listening to our um, our, our, our our affiliate partners, um, New Homes of Tampa Bay. That's www.newhomestpa.com. Um, Blooming Days Flower Shop. Blooming Days Flower Shop. That's www.bloomingdays.com, and of course our friends at the River at River Chronicle. dot com and River TV at www.redriverchronicle. dot com. Um, we are we are thrilled and blessed to have such great friends um, that that are, are giving us time as we do this to to grow this thing in the way that it ought to be grown. Um, thanks, thanks so much. Um, it is again an amazing time. I mean, it, it, it never, frankly, it never occurred to me that there'd be. I know there'd be butt hurt and upset, but this kind of thing is crazy. Um. This kind of this kind of behavior for me is is completely and totally crazy uh, because basically because it's not you know what it's not going to do any good. I mean, if you if you get all of this all of this together and 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 you spend all this money, what good is it going to do? It isn't like you're going to be able to bully the country. Or the president, or, or anybody else, into redoing the elections. Okay.
Okay, so we're going to listen to uh, Chris Matthews, Mr. Tingly feeling down the legs in two th- in, 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 in 2008 is just, it's the most ridiculous thing. Um, she has Kareen Jean-Pierre of MoveOn.org. And um, because this is MSN, this is MSNBC after all. And so they have all the leftist Marxists on. But I think this is, I, I think that this is an interesting statement. Let me make sure I can get this all done by myself. I don't have a producer, so. You have to give me a second here. Uh, there you go. Except that Marx, Marxist tradition, really, which is a good one, to always try to explain elections by economics, and I think it almost always works. How about those protesters? What would you say to those kids? Most of them in their 20s. Yeah. Uh, they break it. I think they do go to school during the day, because I think they came up out of NYU mm-hmm. uh, last night up from downtown, you know, in yep. the village. Yep, I know. And they yep. march all the way up past Trump Tower to make their statement. What, what kind of a statement is it really there to make? Well, look, this they is, lost. Is their, look, it's their First Amendment right, right? And I think they're exercising that right, and good for them. And look, the country is grieving. Something happened on Tuesday night that people were not anticipating. Donald Trump, let's not forget, yes, they were cordial to each other, which is wonderful, which is great. It's part of our democracy. But they, he ran a hateful campaign. Mm-hmm. He talked about women. He talked about getting rid of Muslims. He, his, the way he launched his campaign attacked Mexicans mm-hmm. and called them rapists and criminals. But, so but, that is not going to go away. That's not going away. But I do want to say one thing that you said, Steve, which I, I it, it's not like, it's not like, uh, President Obama started a fight with Donald Trump and they've been at it for, for years. Donald Trump five years ago stepped into the political arena going after President Obama, bir- leading the birther movement in, essentially. And be. so, and so that is the reality. And that's why I say we should applaud I, I, President I, Obama I think, because that, it, it, that was incredibly look, personal. And it I wasn't think that just was a mistake and a mistake that he show corrected. Your Harvard degree. It was, I mean, it was a mistake that? that he corrected. And by the way, though, when you say, by the way, these you students, I do want to... I don't not. like this word. You mean you made the wrong turn to... Like, what do you mean mistake? He chose to say the president of the United States, without any evidence, was an illegal immigrant, basically, who had come into the country, never been naturalized as an American, and somehow assumed the office. And he also said things like, no one knew him in school, like he was some Manchurian and, and candidate, he, some spooky and, character that was not who he said he was. That wasn't a mistake. That was and he, libelous, and he correct, uh, and, personal and he lying, corrected probably. it. And also, but I think this is important I'll regarding these... He withdrew at his, <laughs> at his convenience. At his convenience, he withdrew. Okay, we're back. Um, you know, I played a little bit more of that than I had anticipated, but this is what I want to tell you. This is what, this is what we're up against. This is what we're up against. Kareem Pierre um, talking about Donald Trump running a, a hateful, a, a hateful campaign. The nation is grieving. The fact of the matter is that the nation is not grieving, not at all. And you know why? Because Donald Trump is... Because, frankly, let's look at it. Donald Trump won, had 59,937,338 votes. The nation is not grieving. The nation is not grieving. The nation is happy. The nation is thrilled. The nation has been able to keep the most crooked candidate that's ever run for office out of the White House. 
The nation is not grieving. Donald Trump did not run a, quote, hateful campaign. Did not. Um, let's go back to statements because we, because we need to go back to the statements um, because we need to say what is true, not what somebody felt or thought. Um, Donald Trump did not, did not say hateful things about Mexicans. He said things that were rough, mean, crass, pot, maybe even, about those who were here illegally. Yes, he certainly did. He didn't say anything about deporting, getting rid of Muslims. Didn't say anything about getting rid of Muslims. He never did. What he said was maybe, and this is and and this is where adults you can separate adults and children is that maybe it's time to with everything going on in the world and everything that's happening here in our country. Um, some of the attacks in the, the attacks in San Bernardino, the attacks in Orlando. Um, maybe it's time to look at the influx of people, Muslims, Islamics, radical Islam, um, that's invading our country. And maybe slow down this immigration from parts of the world that has become our enemy, or believe that we are their enemy anyway. And and it's funny, it, it isn't like we haven't done that before. It isn't like countries are like clubs. They need the right mix. Right? So you go to the club with your friends and you're all in line and the bouncer goes, you, 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 not you, 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 you. And if there's a hot girl in the group behind you, her. Why? Because part of their deal is to make sure the club has the right mix. Part of our immigration laws should be making sure that our country has the right mix. And we've done this before to make sure that there is assimilation, that the people who are here want to be Americans and want to assimilate the American culture. Whatever that is, whatever you think that is. Um, and and, and, and all, he, all Trump ever said about, about Muslims was maybe it's time to, to stop the inflow of 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 people of people from Middle Eastern countries is you know radical is radical Islam until we can figure out who all these people are. Maybe it's not a good idea to have fifty thousand Syrian refugees come when ISIS has said that they are already already going to infiltrate that group of people. It's not smart. Yes, there are people because. Because of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, uh, who are Syrians, who are in, who are who are in harm's way now. Yes, there are, and it is and it is through the um, actions and inactions of the current administration and the former Secretary of State. Yes, and there are, are a great number of people who are fleeing Syria. In comparison, a very small number or a very small percentage of those folks are going to Muslim countries in the region. Why is that? You've got to ask that question. You have got to ask that question. And simply throwing your doors open under the current conditions is simply not that damned smart. all he said he has said nothing about quote women he did get into a feud with Rosie O'Donnell yes and there was a conversation with Billy Bush on the bus but the woman the person that was running his campaign was a woman did anybody notice that the campaign um, that 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 won the White House this time. That the lead person was a woman. The campaign that won the White House, the lead person was a woman. 
Not even the not, not even the woman candidate, not even the female candidate had a female campaign manager. What's that all about? So this so this narrative that the left is playing about uh, about misogyny and 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 him being a xenophobe, talking about Mexicans and and and, his, and, and Muslims. Is moronic. It, it it just doesn't hold any water. Now you may disagree on on policy, and that's fine. Disagree on policy. Disagree on tax cuts. Disagree on that. But you got to stop disagreeing on stuff that you make up. And that's the deal. You know what? You get you get. I mean, to disagree about that you make up. And that's where you're going to draw your line in the sand where uh, about stuff that it's not, it's not even real is frankly insane. It makes you look crazy. You know, there was a candidate here in Fo- in Florida running for uh, running for uh, for Senate um, that was acting frankly he was acting desperate. Um, near the end of the campaign, and I, I messaged him, and I like the guy. You know what? I, you know what? I get it. But some of the things that he was doing just made him look crazy. And you can't look crazy. And right now, the left lost. You lost the election because you looked crazy. You were throwing the same crap up against the wall that stuck before that wasn't sticking and you just kept doing it. You were like a monkey in the zoo throwing his own poo. You just kept doing it. It didn't have any effect and you just doubled down on the same lies. You you tried the same tactics. You I mean, you called Trump a racist and a misogynist and a xenophobe and you did all that stuff and then you dug up some women to say that he had that he had touched them inappropriately. You you tried to I mean you tried to cane him with that stuff and it didn't work because you know what? You were they were lying and you were lying and we found out. And now you're trying the same stuff. If you disagree on policy, great. The only problem with disagreeing on policy is that facts and figures and numbers and truth rule the day and not emotions. This is why you lost. If we can do a postmortem on why you lost, this is why you lost. You went you went full emotional to a group of people that were looking for something something real, something tangible. Give us something real. And every time you went against Trump with some hyper-emotional bullcrap, we found out the truth. We found out the truth. And then what you found out is there's stuff that we don't care, that a lot of Trump supporters, and I'll put myself, I mean, I voted for Trump. I don't know if I can call myself a supporter, but we just don't care about. I know I didn't care about. The conversation on the bus with Billy Bush. I couldn't I couldn't give two craps about that conversation. I don't care. My wife is my favorite female. She didn't care. She didn't care. It didn't that it didn't make any difference to her whatsoever. She's like, well, you know what? That's how guys talk. And all these people who came out holy and now, oh, that's not locker room talk. Oh, that's just not true. Well, that's bullcrap. And and any of us who have been in a locker room know it's bullcrap. You see, when the problem is that the left started lying, they told a big lie, and then they started telling other other little lies and getting their surrogates to lie. Um, and it was just too. It was just the only thing that the left done that was transparent was their lying. Nobody was nobody was buying it, and 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 the problem was that that those are the people who were who were on the fence about Trump started looking at the left and the left men and leftist media freaking out and going crazy and telling lies and blowing up things out of proportion, 
I mean, and telling and talk, talking about things out of context that even they said, oh, that's enough of this. Screw it, I'll vote for Trump. And that helped a lot of people who were, I, I said, I, I, and I've been saying today, who were on the Trump D, on the DL for Trump, on the down low, um, who weren't going to say anything. And there were a lot of African Americans and a lot of Hispanic Americans um, who were on the DL for Trump. And even a lot of um, coal workers in West Virginia and Pennsylvania who might have been on the DL for Trump. When Hillary Clinton goes to West Virginia and, and, and Pennsylvania and talks about putting them out of work, they may have gone in with their slate card and voted Democrat everywhere else, just like the union told them to do, and got to the presidency and heard that, you know, and, 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 and were, was reminded that Hillary Clinton said that she would put them out of business. Whole towns need some of these coal mines to even exist still. And they looked at the presidents, and they looked at Jill Stein, and they looked at, at Gary Johnson, and they looked at Hillary Clinton and Donald J. Trump, and just said, what the F, Trump? And they circled the Trump, or they pushed out the little, the little tab for Trump, and they put their ballot in the envelope, put it in the machine, and said, it's done. What do I have to lose? Same thing happened in the African American community. The very same thing happened. What do I have to lose? They may have voted Democrat everywhere else on the ticket, but when they got to Trump and Clinton, they said, you know what? He's not wrong. And she's awful. And I hate the way media is portraying her as this this queen of nice and lovely and wonderful when she's actually a teetotal bitch. People just didn't buy it. People just didn't buy it. Whatever you were selling left, whatever you were selling Democrats, people didn't buy it. And those of us who were paying attention thought, wow, Democrats are in a mess when they have to fire the chair of their party the day before their convention. Why? Because it was found out that she was, that she was helping cook the books against Bernie Sanders. And it wasn't like they denied it. It was true. Holy crap, it was true. So she quit. And immediately, immediately, in one fell swoop, went to work for the Clinton campaign. Somebody that should have been drummed out of politics um, on a rail was embraced by the Clinton campaign. And those of us who were paying attention, who weren't, who weren't Trump fans at the beginning, said, you know what? There's no way I can let this sort of corruption and criminal activity get in the White House. So I'm one of those people that my friend Ali Akbar called the Repu Re reluctant Republicans. And said, I'll vote for Trump. And there were a lot of people voting against Hillary Clinton that had to vote for Trump. I get that. But the fact of the matter, this is who, this is who our president is, Captain Cupcake. Just like for us, President Obama has been has has been the president of the United States and my president for the past eight seven and a half almost eight years. That's just my reality. I didn't necessarily like it or care for it, but I didn't have to because it didn't matter. The truth is, the fact is that President Obama is president of the United States of America. That's the truth. That's the fact. So you can protest and be pissed off about. President-elect Trump. You could not like it. You can organize for next time. You can organize your neighborhoods. You can do all this stuff. But like the like the gentleman said, what you don't have the right to do in your free speech is block traffic. You don't have the you don't have the right to impede somebody else's right to live freely. That you do not have the right to do. We got to get out of here. Thanks so much for coming to fight back. My name is Will Lawson. You can go back. You can go to www.fightbackmedia.com, and you can donate. Um, you can also purchase a banner ad if you click if you click the buy um, the buy now and fill your information out. If you have a cause, a candidacy, a company um, that you want to promote on the Fightback Media website, 
um, just go ahead and it's thirty dollars for um, for six thirty dollars for sixty days and um, you can write your information down you can send me an email at wls860 of gmail.com letting me know that um, you want a banner ad on the uh, Fightback Media website um, and then we'll also do a commercial that we'll put on the Fightback Media sh- on the on the Fightback show for you for your for your cause your candidacy or your company. Um, I'll voice it myself. It'll be good. It'll be good times. It'll be good stuff. All for thirty dollars for sixty days. Thank you ever so much. And do we see you again? Go out there and learn something. Love somebody. And for goodness' sakes, take care of yourself. Chief Ray, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The Pinky and the Brain. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. One is a genius, the other's insane. The laboratory mice, the genes have this mice. The Pinky, the Pinky and the Brain. Brain, 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 brain. Before each night is done, their plan will be unfurled by the dawning of the sun. They'll take over the world, the pinky and the brain. Yes, pinky and the brain. The twilight campaign is easy to explain. To prove their mousy worth, they'll overflow the earth. The pinky, the pinky and the brain. Brain, 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 brain. brain. Ah!